So um, I am Jay Wilson. I'm the lead designer of Diablo 3. And these are my very, very close friends. Uh, Leonard Boyarski, lead world designer. Brian Marsro, our art director. And Julian Love, who is our lead technical artist. Today we're going to take you through um, how we design characters for Diablo 3. Um, we're going to focus mostly on character classes, um, and, um, but a little bit on monsters as well. And this is pretty much going to be um, uh, a cross-discipline type of panel. Essentially, we're going to do design, uh, story and lore, and um, art. Um, so we're going to take you kind of through our entire pipeline of how we do that. So we're going to be jumping back and forth between a bunch of us as we go through the slides. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and introduce, as I said, Leonard. And he's going to start talking about how we develop a story for our player classes. The first thing we wanted to do is look at uh, the history and character backgrounds. Uh, we wanted really unique characters. And to do this, we uh, wanted our characters to have well-defined personalities as well as character arcs and basically their own feel. Now this is reflected in the skill system, or the, their personal skills that Jay's going to talk about, but we set out to create archetypes. Um, when you're playing a barbarian, you want to feel like you're playing the powerful fighter from the way he talks um, to the skills he has. Um, also, the NPCs in the game, the non-player characters, will react to the uh, classes differently. The barbarians are a fairly well-known race of people, though they are eight feet tall and about 300 pounds of pure muscle, which can be intimidating. And the witch doctors are from a tribe that's very remote and not a lot of people know about them. And so they're very um, kind of strange to people. They're not quite sure what, what to make of them. So the NPCs will react to them differently and, it's, um, and that will add a different flavor to your playing experience, um, which will hopefully bring you into the story more and bring you into the game more. And that's not to say we're going to have more story than the previous games. We like to think of it as deeper and uh, more fulfilling. Um, we're not going to have a longer presentation. There's not going to be huge dialogue trees. Um, we're just doing a more concise, better presentation, we believe. So interesting characterization um, adds weight to the story. Um, when we flesh out these characters and give them a backstory, it makes them much more interesting than, say, your off-the-shelf fighter. The, the Barbarian is the same Barbarian that you played in Diablo 2, uh, but it's 20 years later. He's seen a lot. He's gone through a lot. Um, finding out what these things are, what he's, where he's at in his life, um, what has happened to his people at the end of Lord of Destruction. Uh, Mount Ariat was destroyed. That's where the Barbarian's ancestral home is. Um, we have lore about the different classes that we've introduced so far up on the website that goes deeper into these things. But we're just trying to make the point that we're, we're personalizing these characters. We're not, they're not generic. Um, they're not an empty void in the middle of, a sto of the story. Um, we've really tried to help make the character a central part of the story by giving him a stake in it. Um, the different classes have different reasons for being where they are at the beginning of the story. They have different reasons for becoming involved in the story. So with that, I'm going to hand this over to Jay. After we've kind of developed a basic background for a character, especially a class, um, what we do on the design side is try to come up with a series of defining traits, abilities, and things that those characters will use. So, and those are really not, we're not at the point where we're designing skills or anything like that. We're just trying to get the broad strokes. What's this character about? Um, so we have a couple of just design philosophies we follow at this stage. Um, they're not necessarily even unique to us. They're something that is just kind of blizzard design philosophy that we share across the teams. Um, so I'm going to go through a few of those now. Um, the first one's a concentrated coolness. And the idea of this um, is that Every class needs to have its own thing that makes it cool and that needs to be unique to them. And so it makes an archetype, it, so it makes a character really sing. It makes them really awesome. The Barbarian's a great example. He's this pure, physical, melee fighter. Um, and you could have other fighters as other classes, but you wouldn't want any of them that have his tone. You wouldn't want any of them that are, have his brute strength, because that's really what defines him. So getting those kind of key things and saying, well, and for, for the Barbarian, it was 
You know, he's just an unstoppable sheer physical force. So that was kind of his concentrated cool idea. The next one is, is putting together a series of defining traits. And these are basically just examples of the kinds of things that they could do. Um, so you could say a particular class like the Witch Doctor, um, well, he raises zombies and he um, plays around with diseases and plagues and he likes to control people's minds. Um, so these are kind of what we call defining traits. These are basically just to kind of get people's imagination going on these characters so that if we're not excited about them, then they're not going to be cool. And that's a lot of how we make the decisions about what characters we're going to do is what we're excited about. So, and then the last one is, uh, you know, we ask ourselves, are these things really awesome? You know, are they really cool? Are we talking, when we talk about skills for a character cluster, are we saying, well, we can have a, a skill where you do like 1% extra critical, critical damage. It's like, oh, well, that's not very exciting. I mean, it's got its point within uh, an overall kind of character build system, but... If that's what you're defining your character by, well, that's not a really awesome character. But if we say, oh, well, he hits the ground so hard that everything in front of him gets completely crushed by the seismic force, that's pretty awesome. So those are the kinds of things that we look for for the characters. And, you know, it's funny because when you talk about them in a panel, they almost seem obvious, but it's really easy when you get in a team to get caught into those nitty-gritty details of like, well, you know, what kind of attributes is this guy going to have or things like that. And it's always important to remember you start with something really awesome, really awesome actions and defining traits. So now I'm going to pass it to Brian. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. He knows better than me. <laughs> I got the script right in front of oh. me. It's fine. Uh, so basically, uh, as art director, uh, my job is to kind of help our, help our creative artists take all that information that Jay and Leonard just went through um, with the story, the background, what we're trying to accomplish with the uh, gameplay design, um, and really bring that to visual life. You know, that's um, kind of our job. So, you know, when Jay was talking about awesome action and things like that, uh, it's our job to actually make that uh, visually appealing and, and actually happen. So in order to do that for Diablo 3, one of the main things that we uh, wanted, to, wanted to do was actually start back at the beginning and really take a good hard look at what this franchise was all about and what made it such a classic uh, gameplay experience. So we started with uh, the original Diablo, and you can see the three original classes up there. And we took a look at some of our early concept designs for that and kind of defined what made those awesome at the time and why they became kind of a timeless um, set of characters. And what you can't, you can't really see on these, these uh, concepts here, but one interesting thing that we were noticing when we uh, were analyzing these old drawings and the old characters and stuff was just the, uh, the dark nature with which um, they were created. A lot of their armor is very sharp. Um, there's a lot of history to them. Um, in fact, the, the wizard in this example, um, if I had the full sketch up there, you could see that his, his feet are actually pierced with very large bones. Um, and that's really what kind of inspired us when we were talking about how we wanted to approach, approach our hero classes moving forward, was, you know, what kind of a world do you live in where you pierce the bottom of your feet? That's got to mo be the most harsh, um, engaging world that you could possibly imagine to live in. But that's the world that our hero classes were kind of existing in. And the other thing you start to wonder about is, well, what kind of a background does a guy like that have? You know, I mean, they look a little bit sketchy, you know, like a, a rogue, you know, the wizard doesn't look too happy. Um, these guys live in a sort of a morally gray area, and that's really something that inspiration-wise uh, inspiration we kind of latched onto as a character team. So moving forward into Diablo 2, uh, again, we kind of took those, those more mature themes uh, in, the, in the character realm. Here are the hero classes you can see. And in Diablo 2, we kind of expanded on that. So with the Diablo 1 heroes, you know, we had some morally gray characters. Well, in Diablo 2, what you see with the Necromancer and the Assassin, I mean, those names right there are, are downright mean. I mean, in some cases, those could actually be... Uh